up dudes and babes, DT here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to another Boom Beach video. Today we're gonna jump in into a task force video with a second task force, DT2. Uh, DT2 has been very, very independent and uh, I've actually went ahead and visited them last week and stayed there for about uh, six days or so to participate in a piece with them and just spend a ton of time with them because I really missed them and I felt like it was really unfair that I haven't been visiting the task force in quite some time. So I'm going to show you Operation Sour Grapes today and usually I show you sort of the first and last video uh, or first and last attack from um, operations that I do with the uh, DT1 and today I decided to go ahead and show you all of the attacks because uh, Sour Grapes does not have that many bases and also the video is not going to be like a 30 minute video so why not. Uh, let's go ahead and watch every single one of the attacks uh, and we're gonna have loads of fun together. This is the uh, first task force video with the lower TF uh, since the update. So today we're actually going to see some of the prototypes on the bases and check out the hot little hot pot on this base over here. And in case you guys are wondering, I'm not at home right now. Well, I'm actually at home, but I am at my parents' house. So this is the baby DT's room. This is where the DT grew up. Okay. So uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and go into a second attack on Quay. And uh, um, there are not that many attacks so the task force actually is doing really super duper well they uh, are very like like I said they're very independent well obviously they don't need me to hold their hand or anything because uh, they're all uh, boomers and um, I actually did not participate in this particular <clears throat> task force attack. I did participate in the one before, but I wanted to, uh, to record this one here because um, this one has some of the brand new prototypes. And like I said, a lot of people were really, really excited about their brand new protos after they came out. So uh, here we are. And uh, I feel like showing every single one of the attacks on the base just really goes to show what it takes to bring them down. I merely cannot record, or I mean, I could record every single attack on the um, on the, on the videos for DT1, but I feel like uh, there are a lot more than 15 uh, attacks. Usually they're like between 25 to 30 plus um, attacks. And I don't want you guys to be totally bored and watch like 45 minute long video on an operation. But if you do have great tolerance on watching Boom Beach videos, go ahead and let me know. Like if you had to guess, uh, when do you think you decide, oh, I'm so bored, I'm not gonna watch anymore. Is it four minutes, is it five minutes, or is it like 10 minutes? I hope it's more than four minutes because Boom Beach is so much fun, I can watch it like all day. Um, so here we are guys, we are now watching Operation and Attack on Quay. Uh, I'm not uh, showing you you the replays on uh, on the on this OP based on the level of the difficulty of the base that's being taken down. I'm just showing them to you as they appeared and then going obviously in the order so you can see the takedowns. But um, Quay is one of the more difficult bases uh, for Operation Sour Grape. So that was actually a pretty easy takedown and was really totally OP. So let's go ahead and jump into Quota. Quota is once again a bit more difficult than uh, than Quay. And actually look at this really, really cool replay here. There's going to be a little bit of GBE farming on the left hand side. And then the energy uh, and the GBE being earned over here is going to be used to take down that one pesky uh, shock launch in the middle and unfortunately there isn't going to be enough just like one more artillery shot and there would have been enough to take it down but nope 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 just just a tad short and not able to take it down but the next person who's going to jump in into the attack is actually going to be able to take it down with the first artillery shot and that majorly opens up the front because it allows you to just go ahead and uh, jump right in and look at that boom cannon what a range gun totally totally what a range and speaking of the range um, I feel like now the defenses with most range are of course the rocket launcher uh, shock blaster some of the other prototypes but 
grappler. Wow, I was talking in the previous video and I was just doing a little bit of rearrangement on my base and realizing the range of grappler. It's completely mind-blowing. It's the same as the range of the rocket launcher. So yes, well, I digress. Now let's go ahead and watch the GBE farming over here and weaken up the power core and then uh, just trying to take down that remaining shock launcher, which didn't happen just because we ran out of time, but it was so, so very close and obviously would have been totally awesome but now let's go ahead and look at this takedown over here if there is going to be a quick let's get rid of the shock launcher uh, train of thought and then the combination of double uh, a was um, well a little bit different so I am a huge fan of weird troop combos non-traditional troop combos but I have to say that the Cryonier Zuka Scorcher or Cryo Scorcher, Cryo Zuka or Skooker Cryo, however you want to call it, was definitely very unconventional given that there were the boom cannon and regular cannons uh, over in that corner did not make the uh, the troops last very long. So that was just kind of uh, an odd combo, I have to say. I mean, there still was a takedown of the boom cannon, but I do think that if Cryoneers maybe would have been replaced with just all Zookas or maybe some heavies, then definitely the troops would have lasted a bit longer. And um, if you're wondering, you're like, why are you being so critical? Well, I feel like I am most of the time are pretty critical. Like I will watch the attack and I'll say, okay, this could have been done better, that could have been done better. I still admire them, don't get me wrong, but I always watch the replays and just try to figure out how next time I personally can do things better, how I can learn from the replay and whatnot. But look at this awesome takedown over here. The Zookas were getting so, so close to being totally annihilated by the rocket launchers and just with few seconds left, the Zookas brought home the victory. So let's continue moving on and let's watch another replay on Crunch. Crunch 108 VPs over here and we are going to go from the right hand side, uh, this particular base does not have a brand new prototype. There is not a hot pot and there is not a grappler. There is just the good old fashioned defenses over here. But look at that shock blaster. That shock blaster is complete killer. So it took out the troops so super quickly. And now we are going to uh, witness yet another shock blaster, uh, shock blaster takedowns because shock blaster basically is like, okay, if you don't cover up your troops, if you don't shock it, you cannot really hope to keep your troops alive much longer. And I have to say shock blaster uh, does not really give a chance to medics to patch up the troops just because because uh, especially with Zookas, the minute the Shock Blaster or the second the Shock Blaster touches them, the medics basically don't have time to even patch them up. So I kind of do have to say, I think like the medics could have been replaced uh, for another boat of heavies and then maybe uh, you could have gotten through a little bit further. Mr. Popeye, but uh, nonetheless, still a ton of VPs collected on the base and preparing the base for the next uh, person following up to get a little bit further in into, uh, into the base and obviously for the final takedown of the power core that shock blaster and a shock launcher absolutely have to go so let's go ahead and take a look at the second attack on the crunch and now we're gonna actually third attack I take it back this is the third attack I lost count uh, I'm also quite quite distracted now because I'm just um, yeah, just bleh, bleh. okay. Uh, let's go ahead and watch this one over here. The shock blaster is now down, and so is the shock launcher. Now we're gonna take care of the boom cannons, and from there on, guys, the road to the victory is completely opened up for the next person. And look at how cool those zookas are! And unfortunately, they don't make it far because of the rocket launchers on the left hand side. But this only means that the following person is going to take him down, and boy a look at the takedown. Uh, Mr. Chick here is taking down Crunch with all warriors. Just think about the last time you saw a takedown of a task force attack with all warriors. Not the takedown of the rocket launcher or shock blaster or anything like that. The takedown of the course. So when I watched this, I was like, oh yeah, I am definitely showing every single one of the attacks. And uh, this was totally, totally beautiful. 
I haven't seen warriors being used, like I said, other than taking down particular defenses on the base in such a long time. So this was a total treat and I hope you enjoyed it. And if you always use warriors uh, on your task force operations and uh, you use warriors to also finish up the core, go ahead and leave a comment below and I will comment back at you and tell you that you are a boom beach god because with task force warriors, Warriors are just tricky because you got to get them up there, you got to spend the GBE and the core usually is so, so strong that oftentimes warriors just don't quite make it. But that was quite a takedown. And look at all of the explosions here. The Scorchers are now taken down and the tanks are going to be finished off with both the boom cannon and the rocket launchers on each side. So <clears throat> this combo could have really done so much better if there was one extra boat of uh, one boat of medics instead of maybe one boat of tanks. Uh, I think they could have probably lasted a lot longer, but instead um, just a bunch of the defenses were taken out on the left hand side. And now we're going to watch a flawless takedown of heavies and Zookas. And if you guys ever do like uh, OPs uh, with your team, with your task force, where you do like one troop combo only, and then that's all you do, uh, do let me know. And I was mistaken, this wasn't a takedown, although I think uh, the takedown would have been a lot harder given that there were those uh, rocket launchers. So this was a preparing moment for the final takedown. So let's now watch the final takedown and look at that, the landing, just a little bit of protective layer there because there are a bunch of rocket launchers on the shore so better safe than sorry and there are medics with the uh, zookas and heavies here i don't know that medics can do a lot of good um on the on the op on the operation like this where there are you know major ice boostings happening and i feel like the medics are not really going to be able to save the zookas because zookas will get taken out with a single blow of whatever so personal opinion i think medics could have uh, been taken out of this combo but that's just my personal opinion because watch obviously like the boom cannon takes out the zooka and it's not like it just takes off half of the health of the zooka and the medic could patch it up it just takes it out altogether so i think medics could have been taken out but that's just me being a little bit too much of a critic go ahead and tell me to uh, zip it if I am being too critical, but look at the grappler. There is a grappler on this base, and guys, I like I was waiting for in a new prototype so so much. I know a lot of you, you know, have said that you wanted a lot more from the update than just prototypes and some minor tweaks and whatnot, but I personally have to say I do love the prototype, so I can't really complain. The hot pot is Ooh, so amazing. The grappler is a lot of fun. And um, I have to say, I do enjoy the update. I also, like, I never expect, um, you know, like we, we can't really expect anything in particular from the developer. So I'm just happy to see brand new things because like a kid, I get excited about something that is brand new. I mean, it's just like a brand new mentality. You're like, ooh, ooh, new, shiny, shiny, shiny. Okay, so that was my two cents. I know a lot of you haven't been too thrilled about the update, but I do think that the new prototypes are amazing and I'm personally really happy with the update and I know it's just came out, but I already cannot wait for the next one. So whenever that is going to be, I will be looking forward to it, okay? And also, oh, let me know what you think about the, uh, like the boom box where you can get all the cool info and whatnot. And uh, uh, if you've seen your your lady, your girl, DT being featured there, that was really, really amazing. And I know I'm digressing totally. Uh, Supercell, thank you so very much for featuring my video there. I was so humbled and so happy to see it. I cannot begin to tell you guys how amazing it was to wake up to it. I had no idea this was going to happen. And I saw comments on my YouTube uh, and on Twitter. And that was just like mind blowing when I saw it actually. So operation is getting closer and closer to an end here, guys. So operation is finally over, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know I haven't put out a video for a lower TF in quite some time. 
So I hope this was entertaining and educational. And let me know if there are any particular operations that you would like me to cover with you. And maybe I can talk my uh, task force into completing that particular operation so I can bring you that video. Thanks again for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, it, to like this video if you enjoyed it. And I will see you in the next episode. Keep on booming.